Today we're going to build a wireless vlog style camera rig. Welcome back to Ben's Tech Lab. One of these days I'd like to take you on a tour of my office studio and show you all of the equipment that's hidden behind the scenes that allows me to make a video with zero setup and zero takedown. And who knows, maybe I'll take you on a tour of my network rack where my NAS, router, and home automation stuff lives. Anyway, I wanted to build a wireless vlog style camera rig that's still hooked into my A10 Mini Pro ISO, which records all of my camera angles to one SSD for easy editing. Besides having a mobile camera rig for walking around, I could also keep the core part of the rig on a quick release plate so that I could simulate having way more camera angles than I actually do. I'd then be able to pop the wireless camera off of the switch pod and pop it onto something else like a super clamp, which can clamp to the edge of my desk, a bookshelf, a C-stand, or anything else. For today's video, I'm gonna be using the Sony a6400, but most of these components are pretty universal and will work with any camera you wanna use. I chose the a6400 because it has really good autofocus and it also has this handy little pop-up screen for vlog mode. All right, so let's get the first component out of the box here. What I've got here is the small rig L bracket for the a6400. Now, the reason this is an L bracket and not a full cage is for weight. My intention is to be able to hold this vlog style camera rig up uh, with one hand while I'm walking around, so I want it as light as possible. I do use a full-size cage on much of my other uh, cameras, but this one is specifically about half the metal that would be on a full cage, but still provides the opportunity to mount a few accessories on the side uh, that we're going to get to later, such as a microphone and a wireless HDMI transmitter. So let's put this on the camera body first. <clears throat> small rig is really nice about including a small tool on the bottom of their uh, rigs, which is kind of fun. And then you can just uh, screw this cage on like so. And then the tool just magnets onto the bottom of the uh, half cage L bracket here. All right, so we got an L bracket on our camera, but let's set the camera aside for a second and go to the switch pod and uh, quick releases that I've chosen. So first of all, if you've been in the YouTuber world for more than a day, you've probably seen the switch pod advertised somewhere. It's pretty famous because it was designed specifically for YouTubers who want to do vlog style setups. Let's take a look at the product here. So the switch pod has got some very cool design features. Obviously it's designed to be held with one hand like this where you can have a camera mounted on top, but it's got this unique aspect of being able to throw the legs out and set it down on a table anytime you want to. Uh, that makes it really easy to have a variable shot where you maybe want to go from the side of your computer or focus on a product on your tabletop reviews. You can just move it around as needed. And when you need to pick it up, you just pick it up and walk away and you can go kind of vlog style mobile wherever you want to go. Uh, with the three legs deployed, you can also hold two of them as a little bit of a grip for uh, kind of a cheap steady cam sort of setup here without getting too fancy. So the switch pod has a quarter 20 screw on the top. So you could theoretically mount just the camera straight onto the switch pod, which is fine. But I found two problems with that. One, it's a little tedious to screw in and screw out every time you want to take your camera on and off of the tripod. But the other reason is it is helpful to have some ability to control the top. So a ball head or something like that is really quite helpful. Now. Uh, SwitchPod does sell their own brand uh, ball head, which I'm sure is a fabulous product based on the quality that I see in this product, but it doesn't have any kind of quick release. So if it's a dedicated vlog setup, then, you know, maybe try the SwitchPod product. But uh, I'm going to take a look at a few Oban products today because I love the Oban quick releases. All right, so I've got three Oban products here today. This is their QRA R2, which is a flat quick release plate that can be added onto anything else, uh, such as a tripod that doesn't use their quick release plate. Um, then I've got the VHR2, which is a tilt head. It only moves in one direction, tilting forward and back. And then there's the full BA117, which is a complete ball head that articulates in every direction you could imagine. Now, obviously there's some trade-offs between these. The most obvious is gonna be weight. This is gonna be your lightest option, a medium option, and your heaviest option. All of these products use the exact same quick release plate. So I use all of these throughout my studio and my cameras can click off and click on to any location in my studio where I've got one of these open quick release plates. I'm gonna use the VHR2 tilt head specifically because it's quite a bit lighter. So it says right on the front here, uh, this one is 0.65 pounds or 0.29 kilograms, 290 grams. Uh, the full ball head is 0.9 pounds or 0.4 kilograms, 400 grams. So it's, you know, nearly 30% uh, heavier than this one. 
All right, so here's the tilt head uh, VHR2. So obviously this one just has an, a, a one screw on the side and it just tilts back and forwards, but it's got the same quick release plate on here. Okay, so we're gonna mount this uh, tilting uh, VHR2 head onto the um, switch pod here. Just gonna screw it into the base. So I'm gonna re uh, remove the uh, plate here and mount it to the camera cage. All right, when mounting the quick release plate to the camera cage, I really like to get the pin uh, in one screw hole and the screw in another screw hole so it prevents it from twisting. So on the cage here, I've got two holes. I'll put the pin in one of them and the screw in the uh, next one here. All right, you can see this is coming together. That's looking pretty good. You can pick it up, walk around with it with a uh, camera like this. We're getting somewhere. I like the design so far. <clears throat> One little minor detail here that I didn't point out before is that I already had a cold shoe relocation bracket on the top of the 6400. Um, you won't need this for all cameras, but in the case of the A6400, for some reason, they put the cold shoe right in front of the flip-up uh, display, which is kind of annoying if you're gonna put a microphone right here. So this relocation bracket just lets me put the mic out here so I can still see the monitor. All right, now for a microphone. DD just came out with this new product, which seems quite innovative. It's called the D4 Duo, which has two microphone capsules, one on the front and one on the back. The idea is that you might be vlogging with your camera like this, where you're talking towards a microphone on here, or you might be holding it like this and giving a tour of your facility or your gym or your whatever, and you're talking to the back of the camera, in which case the rear capsule will pick up your voice much better than the front capsule. Let's open up this uh, DD mic here. All right, as far as uh, complaints go, I watched a bunch of reviews on this DD mic uh, on YouTube, and it seems that the number one uh, complaint, if there's anything wrong with it, is its sensitivity to wind. But it is nice to see that they ship with windscreens uh, for your mic. I'm gonna take them off just for clarity of seeing this build, um, and also because I'm doing uh, indoor stuff right now. So I'll set these aside, but it's nice to know that they're included. So here's the microphone uh, capsule itself. It's interesting. It seems like the mount came a little bit uh, biased towards one side. That seems a little bit of a negative uh, for the deity quality side, but let's still hook this thing up and see how it sounds. Uh, it comes with a nice little uh, cord here. There we go. There's the uh, DD D4 Duo mounted to the cold shoe relocation on this uh, A6400. All right, I'm gonna take the camera off of the uh, switch pod for a second here. Another nice thing about these open uh, quick release plates is they are flat on the bottom, which means you can set the camera down uh, on the table and it's not gonna have any protrusions that tip it over or make it try to fall. All right, let's get to some of the really fun stuff. I've got the uh, Hollyland Mars 300 Pro here. This is um, what I'm gonna use for wireless HDMI transmission. This is a pretty popular kit and you'll see it all over YouTube. Um, it's not perfect. It does have a small bit of latency, which they claim is around 80 milliseconds. Um, that's small enough that it doesn't matter for kind of amateur YouTuber use. Uh, some of the really pro solutions that have zero latency are two, three or four times the cost uh, just to get going. So for my use case, 80 milliseconds is a totally acceptable latency. All right, so what do we got in here? So we've got the transmitter unit and the receiver unit. They are labeled here on the body so that you can see uh, what's going on. The units are, uh, I think, identical in size. There's just a difference in their function. Um, and there's a lot of reviews on these on YouTube, so I'm not gonna go into crazy detail about uh, the specs and whatnot of what they do. Uh, bottom line is you put your HDMI in on the transmitter and you get it out on the other side on the receiver. They can take the Sony L-Series batteries or USB-C power, and they're pretty compact in size. I wanted something small and lightweight, and so I didn't want something with three, four, or five antennas sticking out at the top of it because this is a wireless vlog-style thing that I'm going to be carrying around uh, with me when I'm using it. Open up the kit a little more here. Got a few bits inside, so there's the transmitter. We got a little cold shoe connector plate. You got your USB-C cable for um, powering it if you like. And you've got this little adapter which can be used for mounting, which we are going to use today. On the receiver side, we've got a very similar body style uh, function here. And no more goodies on that side. So you only get one USB-C cable, presumably for only one side of the kit. 
and you only get one of these uh, side mounts, which is a, an interesting caveat here. All right, to screw on this little adapter plate, you will need a small kind of a jeweler style flat blade screwdriver. Okay, so we've added the adapter on the transmitter here so we can attach it to the uh, camera cage. We're gonna use this little cold shoe adapter. Screw it in there a little bit. All right, there we go. So we've got the uh, HDMI transmitter attached on the cage. Okay, so now it's time to wire up the HDMI from the camera to the wireless transmitter. The A6400 has micro HDMI. So I found these specialty cables on Amazon made by a company called Dutec or Dutec. Uh, they're micro HDMI to full size HDMI, but the cool thing is they have it in all of the variations of right angle orientations. So whether you're uh, micro HDMI is facing forwards or backwards or upside down, you can find the right angle uh, end that's gonna match your camera. So this one has a micro HDMI that should face the rear of the camera on the right angle connector. Okay, last but not least, we're gonna need a small Sony NPF series battery. This again was, uh, this is the smaller 550 size. This is from Newer and it's an Amazon special, uh, fairly inexpensive. Um, I picked the smallest one I could because I'm not likely gonna be vlogging for a long period of time and I want the weight to be kept down on my uh, setup here. Just playing around with the uh, cable organization. I threw two little elastics around here to hold this uh, HDMI cable down and it seems to be nice and compact and snag free. Okay, so next thing we need to do here is to hook up the receiver module to my ATEM Mini Pro ISO 4 recording. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of power here. I will work out some permanent plug-in power for it eventually, but I'm just throwing a battery on there for quick uh, show and tell today. I'll grab an HDMI cable and put it onto HDMI out. And then I'll just uh, turn this guy on and set it off to the side. All right, I'm liking how this wireless vlog style camera rig is coming out so far. The only thing we need left before we can test this thing is the choice of a lens. Now you can buy the Sony a6400 with a kit lens for under hundred bucks when you buy it with the camera body. That's a pretty good deal. It's a 16 to 50 millimeter lens. And one of its biggest advantages is gonna be size and weight. So it's quite lightweight. The trade-off is it's not going to have the world's best low light performance because of its aperture and it's not going to have the world's best autofocus. If you really want to step up your game with low light and autofocus, the number one recommended lens on YouTube for vlogging is going to be the Sigma 16mm f1.4 lens. I'll link to this one in the description below as well. All right, we've got a lens. Let's try this thing out. Ah, there we go. We've got a link. So you could just pick it up. Okay, so this is the vlog mode where I've got the flip up screen uh, in front of me. I can see on the flip up screen uh, what I look like. And uh, the microphone, the D4 Duo is just right up here. And the Hollyland Mars 300 Pro is right back there. And I should be able to carry it around with me to give you a little tour of the studio or a network rack or other kinds of things that I want to do on my channel. Cool, okay, well, hey, here's an example of setting the switch pod down on the table to get a cool new camera angle that I might only set up temporarily. So if I was doing a tutorial at the computer here, I'd normally have another camera on top of the monitor and this could provide a little bit of a wide angle shot. That's uh, super versatile and I don't have to do a lot of setup and take down with wires and HDMI. I could just set the camera where I want to. And when I wanna go, I can just pick up and move the camera exactly where I wanna go. So this is gonna be a lot of fun for the channel as we move forward. All right, so anytime I want to, I can just go ahead and flip down this little A6400 screen here and hold the rear two legs. And now I've got a little bit of a mobile steady cam kind of thing where I could take you on a tour of my office and uh, narrate it from behind. The D4 Duo should be capturing this audio from the rear capsule where I could take you uh, around with me and I've got audio and video feeding into my ATEM Mini Pro ISO wirelessly. I'll do more of this kind of uh, studio tour stuff on another day, but this is just a demo of what this little setup would look like uh, if, we, um, if you wanted to build it.
All right, hey, cool. So what I've done here is I've just set the switch pod and the camera over here on the corner of my desk to give you another example of a dynamic camera angle. So uh, to try this thing out, I'm gonna leave the camera there and record it as another camera angle and build something else. So remember I mentioned this was a little too heavy for my preference as a one-handed carry kind of log style setup, but it's super handy to use with a super clamp as another way to move this wireless camera rig anywhere around your studio by clamping to a table, a bookshelf, a C-stand or anything else like that. So what I'm going to do here is this uh, super clamp comes with this little spigot which has a quarter inch thread on the top and this uh, BA117 Oban quick release plate has a 3 8 thread on the bottom. So I've got a small uh, reducer thread here. We'll just uh, put that guy in there. All right I'll just take the spigot out of this uh, super clamp and thread it onto the bottom of this Oban BA117 ball head. And now I can plug it into this quick release anytime I want. Let's face it, maybe that way. All right, so I've attached this quick release uh, open ball head onto this super clamp and you can now loosen this up. You can turn it around like so. You can also bend the ball head around uh, even to a right angle like so, which means no matter what you're clamping it to, you've got a lot of flexibility for how you want to place that camera. So let's try it out. Remove the camera like so. All right, so we've clamped the super clamp up to the ceiling on some mounting stuff here just to show how versatile this wireless vlog style uh, camera rig is. Now watch how fast I can transition this back to the switch pod. And there we go, it was like five seconds and I've moved off of the super clamp mount and gone back to the switch pod mount. This is super cool. I love how versatile this wireless vlog style camera rig is. It takes like five seconds to pop it off the switch pod and throw it on a super clamp or take it off the super clamp and put it back on the switch pod. Hey, if you wanna build a rig like this, consider using my purchase links in the description below. While you're down there, hit the like button and consider subscribing. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Wee! Wee! That's intense. I'm gonna make you sweat. Wow! <laughs>